Hello, I'd like to talk about sea cows, if I may, for a short while. Um, dugons and manatees, you, you've probably heard of them. Uh, they're big, gentle, like, grazing creatures that live in the shallows. They have to live in the shallows because that's where the plants that have to photosynthesize uh, grow, and they can only grow there because the sunlight doesn't penetrate deep water very far. So uh, they live in the shallows and they're big, gentle, grazing, equivalent of cows in the sea. Some people say that they, uh, they are the origins of the, the legends of mermaids. It's difficult to see quite how people could have mistaken these things for, for mermaids, although in this picture you'll notice that this, this particular uh, dugong is very red. I don't know quite why that's so red. Um, sunburn seems unlikely. Anyway, um, you may be wondering, by the way, what's a dugong and what's a manatee? Well, they're uh, the two different kinds of sea cow, and you can tell them apart by looking at the tail. There are various other things. The eyes aren't quite in the same position, uh, nor are the, the, the front limbs the same, but uh, the really big giveaway is the tail. You see, the dugong's got the big crescent moon tail, and the manatee's got the big sort of beaver-like uh, paddly tail. Anyway, uh, there is a problem with the sea cow. Yes, there is a problem, and that is they're endangered. They're endangered uh, because they live in these shallow waters, very close to coasts, and there are an awful lot of boats around, and boats keep hitting them. Um, they get chopped up by propellers. You see this uh, nasty photograph here of one that's uh, suffered that fate, and sometimes they get caught in nets too, and that's not good for them. Um, so there is this problem. There's this wonderful wild creature that we love, um, but it's endangered. So what can we do? Well, one thing we can do is we can hug them. We can love them because look at them. Oh, they're so cute! And we can show what wonderful people we are by hugging them. Uh, although, actually, I think long term this is probably not the best stratagem. No, I have a different idea. And it's quite a simple idea, which I can sum up in two words. Farm them. Now, this may not be what the usual conservationist thinks of uh, as a great way of saving a creature, but it does work. Um, now, here's another uh, type of creature. Um, do you recognise it? It's sort of a deer-like thing, native to the Middle East, and this used to be virtually extinct. They're um, quite easy to hunt, uh, not at all dangerous, and uh, you know, mankind used to twang arrows into them and chomp away on them and go, hmm, great, let's have some more, and they were, as a, as a result, somewhat in danger. But then someone hit on the brilliant idea of farming them, and now they're some of the most numerous mammals on Earth. Do you recognise them? Well, you, here, let's, let's show you another picture. These ones have got uh, big horns on them. Again, they're, they're a wild version, uh, but they're a little bit more recognisable, perhaps. Yes, they're sheep. That's what they are. They are sheep. Now, obviously, the, the modern sheep has been bred for wool production, so uh, its appearance is rather dominated by the wool. But I think you can see, if you look at them again, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what the wild sheep would look like. Yep, they're sheep. Uh, so, farming saved the sheep. Uh, there are still wild sheep, as these photographs attest, and there are an awful lot of domesticate uh, sheep. Now, as soon as you start farming something, then that animal, it belongs to someone. Those animals belong to someone. So suddenly, uh, there are people with a strong vested interest in protecting them. And you can say, right, now this area you cannot take a boat into because the people who have bought this bit of the sea or bought rights to its harvesting, or whatever, have decided, nope, we're going we're gonna to forbid other boats to go across them. As soon as you, you're farming something, suddenly all these vested interests kick into gear and money becomes available for protecting them. And uh, a farmer will, of course, want to breed as many of these things as possible. Now, what can we do with them? Well, I've never actually eaten sea cow, but I'm guessing that if it's like other um, oceanic mammals, it's perfectly edible. And there's an awful lot of meat on a, on a sea cow. And I'd imagine that the leather's pretty good, too. Um, and so yeah, these could be very productive. Now a cow is a harvesting machine, isn't it? You put a cow into the field and it gets on with the job of harvesting that field and then you, if you like, harvest the harvester by slaughtering the cow and eating it. Well, sea cows, they can harvest a bit of the world that at the moment is not being harvested very useful for us. We're not getting much out of this uh, seaweed, but they can turn it into meat and then we can eat the meat. Is that such a bad thing? Well, if it saves the dugong, if it saves the manatee, I think it is a good thing.